Hi there everybody, it's Mikey from Mikey's Mail and all3crochet.com. Together we're presenting to you the octagonal shapes. And you know, this is just the size of a doily and if you like plants and everything like that or something to display on your coffee table, it makes a wonderful doily idea. But uh, you know, this is part of being creative is that we don't need to stop at that. This is my own design. It took me several hours this morning to actually figure out all the dimensions and all the sizing. But I figured out something even more cooler for you to try. So I'm gonna take you to the floor next going to show you what my plan is and then we're going to go through the step-by-step -step demonstration on how to create this. The biggest challenge I had with designing this this morning is that how are these octagons going to work together and I was kind of thinking you know they're going to come together like that but until I did the three I realized that they can't go together because the flat sides because there's eight sides like a stop sign they just don't they won't go three together so they actually have to attach each other on the flat space but the next flat space is here but it's an actual 90 degree angle so that won't work. So your next one will be over here, leaving a little square. So you have to make little squares to go into the middle and then your next one will be right here. So what I would do, if it were me, and the problem that I had and that you need to pay attention to, is that whatever colors or material that you're using throughout your pattern, you need to ensure that it's the same size. What I mean by the same size is that if it's a four ply of something, make sure that all the material is four ply. Because this is extra chunky yarn that I was working with, I didn't have any extra chunky uh, yarn in any other colors other than this. So what would happen is that if I were to use a thinner material or a material that does not match the thickness, is I'm going to end up with a square that is way too small, therefore that these would not be able to come together just like so. When it comes to doing octagons, we are going to work from the center on the way out. Okay, and then even the little squares that we're going to do as a bonus to create an afghan with this kind of pattern, it's also from the inside out. So let's get we're started. We're going to work on the octagon shape first. So let's start off with a slip knot. Hi there everybody, it's Mikey from Mikey's Mail, and together with my friends at All Free Crochet and I, we'd like to introduce you on how to create octagons. This is my own personal pattern, and I'm sharing it with you. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to start off by the center point of the octagon, and we are going to chain three. So this does not count as one, so let's go. This is going to be one, two, and three. So now we, what we need to do is do a series of eight going in a circle. So how do we do that? Now because we've gone already one like this, this is already counted as one. So we're just going to grab our material and double, or double crochet ourselves into the first slip knot. So slip your hook into the first slip knot, grabbing the material, pulling it through, then two and two. Okay, so that was number two out of eight. So see the chain there counts as number one. So this is number two. So let's do this again. And we're going to do this for a total of eight times in a row. So that's two. That was three, sorry. Four. This is five. Now as we're continuing to rotate, you'll see that the, let me just finish the five. Uh, you'll see that the tail is now hanging out. What we want to do is we want to fasten that bad boy into the spot. So that was five. So going in, slip your hook into the center, but lay the straggler over so that it gets trapped when it goes around. Therefore, you can safely trim that off later. So that was number six. Going in, trapping that again. Seven and eight is right now and now what we want to do is call the slip stitch so we're going to trim that off camera so trim that after you're done and just put your hook into the top of the first one that you started grabbing the material pulling it through and through that is a slip knot so what we want to do now is just hold and go to your next revolution so we're now going to work on the next revolution and i know that you probably can't see it from this angle but this is actually protruding out like a ball shape toward me and what we're going to do see this in your hand let's rotate it so we're going to rotate it and now think of it as a bowl shape and you'll see that it kind of looks like a bowl shape one side is kind of protruding in the other one is out so you want to turn it so that the bowl shape uh, the bottom of it is facing you we're now going to chain up three so one two and three and now we're just going to go into the first one but before we do it what we need to do you'll see that there's big heavy gaps in between all of that so we can't just go into the next one yet we have to add another two so one and two so the chaining up a three counted as one of the spokes and the two counts as one of the jumping pieces that you go over so grabbing the material let's double crochet into the very next stitch in the circle double crochet and then chain two so one and two 
going into the next stitch again. So we're just going to do that until we have eight gaps. But I'm just going to keep the video going, just uh, one and two, because it's going to be really quick. It's a really quick revolution. One and two. And I want to explain something to you at the end so that you understand what you're looking for every time you revolve around this thing. So we're chaining two into the next. So what you're looking for in the end is that making sure that there's eight gapping spaces because it's an octagon you're looking for the gap of eight so one two and what do I mean by that this is what I mean so we're near almost to the end so pulling out like this one two three four five six seven so that means that this space in here is number eight so in order to finish off the circle you just go one and two chain is normal and instead of reaching down and double crocheting you're just going to attach it to about the third chain up and slip stitch it. So grab it and pull it through. Just like so. So now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, which is perfect. And now let's go on to your next revolution. Now that you've just slip stitched, you're gonna notice that the bowl shape is even more. So you're actually looking at the bottom of the bowl and the back of it is the inside of the bowl. And I'm only using those terms so that you clearly understand what I'm saying. So now what I want you to do is rotate it around so that you're looking on the inside of the bowl and I want you to chain up three. So one, two, and three. So now what you need to do is you need to understand what you're looking at. If you notice here, you can see a gap, but then there's full uh, three right in a row, and then there's a gap. So this coming up like this doesn't make any sense, does it? Because what you need to visualize at this point is that this is actually part of the next cluster here. So let's double crochet ourselves three times. However, this is where you need to stop. The first one here is already counted at one. So the chaining up of the three was one, this is two, and now this is three. Just like so. So now what you need to do is chain three. So one, two, and three. And now going into the chain again for the next one, double crochet again three times. So I want you to do that every time. So it's a three, three configuration. So three double crochet, and three chains. So that was your three double crochet, one, two, and three. So continue to do that all the way around and I'll catch you back up before we finish so I can show you how to finish this revolution off. So we're now coming to the end and we have to go one more, but I want you to make sure first. Okay, so this one is kind of looking like it's askew, but this is supposed to be with these three, okay? It's supposed to group together and it will group together as we go around. So what you need to do is count the gaps, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so that's one, two, and three, so let's do another one. We want to make sure, and the seven was the very top of the gap area, if you uh, kind of missed me doing that. So let's uh, recount again, and what we need to do is we need to have up with seven or eight gaps all the way around, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the eight would be the final in between. So one, two, and three, and this is where we slip stitch to the top of the chain over here and pulling it together. Okay, so you see the gap kind of pulled itself over just like so, it just naturally did it on its own. So let's uh, begin our next ro revolution. So now we're ready for our next revolution. And what we're gonna do now is that we're just gonna turn it. And the reason why we're turning it is that we want this gap here to actually be at the starting point of our circle. So we're gonna turn it and now chain up our three. So one, two, and three. Now remember what I just said before is that this chaining up counts as being part of the gap. So we want to now put five double crochets into this gap and the first chaining of the three counted as one of them. So this is now one, two, and three and now we want to do five. This five is extremely critical in my pattern design. It what will set off the rest of the actual revolution. So now what I want you to do, we need to jump over this area here, so I want you to chain three. So one, two, and three, and again coming into the next gap, going right in, and we're going to double crochet five times again. So during this whole revolution, you're going to jump over with a chaining of three, and then you're going to put five double crochets.